Hi everybody and welcome back to the Celtic Way where I've got a special preview video. I am joined by Justin Crozer of the RBL Talk podcast. Justin, how are you doing this afternoon? Very good, thank you for having me. No bother at all. What time is it over in, in, in your side of the world? I know that you're not coming from as directly from Leipzig, you're coming from somewhere where else. So tell us exactly what time it is just now. Yeah, so for me, it's 12.46am uh, Tuesday, the 5th of November. So early hours Tuesday morning. I'm actually from the uh, Southern Hemisphere. I'm down in Australia, down in Adelaide. So um, yeah, about nine and a half hours difference between local time and Leipzig. And I think it's probably around about 10 and a half, maybe more uh, for yourself. Yeah, so we've got quite a bit of a, an Australian influence on the podcast already. We, I know you've already spoke to Hamish on the Celtic AM channel, but um, Hamish does the Celtic Way morning briefings as well, so he's used to doing that time differential as well. So it'll be, well, fair, I think you said before it'll be half six in the morning when, Cel when Celtic and RB Leipzig kick off, so it's a bit of a bit of an early start for you, but you'll be tuning in to watch your team against Celtic. It's match day four of the Champions League. Just a quick shout out before we get started and talk about Celtic versus Leipzig. If you want to support us just that little bit more, you can join our YouTube members channel, £2.99 a month, where you'll receive early video access, priority comments and exclusive members chat function. Click that join button if you're on desktop and get involved and become a member on the Celtic Way YouTube channel and press subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's completely free on the on the YouTube channel. We're growing it slowly but surely, but we want to keep on growing. So if you can press that subscribe button, we would greatly appreciate it. As I said previously, it is match day four of the Champions League for Celtic. Celtic come up against RB Leipzig, a team that they've been They've played quite a few times over the past couple of years. Um, definitely, they've played Marco Rose's teams a couple of times over the past few years as well. When you talk about Red Bull Salzburg as well, um, Justin, just to to start off, how has Leipzig's season gone so far? I think we'd best we'd be best starting off domestically before we go into the Champions League form. Second in the Bundesliga table at this moment in time, I know they get beat off as Celtic's match day two opponents in Borussia Dortmund at the weekend, but a solid start for Leipzig, you would say. Yeah, uh, quite good. Uh, the, what the big difference of this season has been the defence. Um, we've had been a bit rocky at times uh, with certain things like our set pieces and uh, whatnot, but in in total, we've been the best and still are the best defence in the Bundesliga at the moment. If if I remember correctly, it is five goals because I remember it was three goals before the Borussia Dortmund game, and then uh, we lost that one unfortunately two one, um, which was an unseasonal performance. I, I don't know if they were just reserving energy reserves upcoming for this uh, Champions League game. Uh, it was a big 180 shift from the 4-2 win uh, in the DFB Pockel just a few days before, so fatigue also might be a little bit of it. Um, but the the attack also hasn't really fired much uh, this season with Lewis Appenda and Benjamin Sesko not really getting the the goals as much as they did last season. Um, but you know the season's still early on, so they could still be just warming up to it. Yeah, so we were talking domestically there and RB Leipzig have had a really good start second in the Bundesliga, as we said. But they've had three losses in the UEFA Champions League. I suppose you can put a wee caveat on that with the fact that they've played Atletico Madrid, Juventus and Liverpool in the last match. So a really difficult fixture list when you look at that in comparison to Celtics, although they did have difficult games against Borussia Dortmund and Atalanta respectively. They did have that Sloven Bratislava game so I think a lot of people would be forgiven for thinking, or Leipzig fans would be forgiven and thinking that this is the easiest game for Leipzig on paper at this moment in time. It definitely is out of the four games. What is the what is the mood in, at, in Leipzig at the moment with regard to the Champions League? Because three losses, but it must be quite understandable given the, the quality of opponent that they're facing. And apart from the Liverpool game, they were in. The, the other two games so it's been it's been a difficult start but there's there's definitely some excuses isn't there yeah there has uh, i mean with, with the atletico madrid game the very i think that was the fir very first one that we played away uh, down in madrid um you know we were in it for most of the game and you know just the home crowd basically got them over the line in the end and then at home, um, you know, losing to Juventus, you know, we're still a quite a young side with most players under the age of, I think it's about 25 or 26, uh, besides maybe three or four. And those are the mainstays uh, that have been with us for quite some time now. So, you know, to go lose in, at home down at, at with 10 men, um, with the opposition at 10 men, I should say, um, is probably something that the 
it shouldn't have happened in, in you'd think in world football, but being such a young side, you know, they'll, they'll learn from that. And, you know, it, we haven't been completely out of the games. Like you said, the Liverpool game was, you know, it, we were in it a little bit and then we just basically got outplayed from, I think maybe like 20 minutes onwards or something like that. Um, you know, and Liverpool is one of those top teams in, you know, world football, if you don't take your chances and um, you're not going to win as simple as that. So uh, it'll be, giving you guys a little bit of discredit to think that, uh, you know, it's the easiest game, um, so to speak, and that we would be overconfident going over there if we think we're just going to go over there and be able to win, that's for sure. Uh, as you know, you've got like the 12th man over there, like Celtic Park is one of those great atmospheres in world football. And, you know, some of these players may not have experienced something like that. They have maybe something similar like they did at um, Signal Aduna Park on the weekend. But, you know, Champions League night, it's a you know, different atmosphere. So to go over there, we're definitely thinking that we're still going to be able to win it, but you guys are no easy beats, that's for sure. Yeah, it should be a really exciting game at Celtic Park. I'm looking forward to going there myself tomorrow night or tonight, as you're saying. I know, I know it'll be Wednesday by the time you're watching it in Australia, but you know we're getting closer towards match day. Whenever anybody's watching this, whether it's a day before or match day, I hope you're looking forward to the game. Match day four, as we've spoke about, just looking at the RB Leipzig team, I was looking at it this morning and it's a real mixture of talent in terms of maybe older talent and then young talent coming through as well. You've got the likes of Kevin Campbell, who's a vice captain. I remember him playing for Red Bull Salzburg against Celtic back in 2014, 2015. He's been about the block. You've got Haidara as well that's played against Celtic before. Willie Orban that's played there. But also you've got young talent as well. Who are the, who are the danger men in RB Leipzig's team? Is it the older players coming through or, or maintaining their spot or is it the new players are really making their name in this RB Leipzig team? Well, it, it's a little bit of both. Um, so, like, we've got some new players that are starting to make the names for themselves. Um, you know, we, we've got Xavi Simmons back on loan uh, again this season. Uh, he's going to be out as uh, he's done a, an ankle uh, ligament injury, but hopefully we should be back by end of December. Um, but it, it's players like uh, Christoph Baumgartner. He, he, he started coming through last season and, you know, he's very versatile. He can play in that Xavi Simmons role or he can even play up front as a striker. Uh, you've also got, you know, um, Nicholas Seiwold, Arthur Vermeeren, uh, Asano Drago that um, will probably be flying over those, even though he's just coming back from a knee injury. He's a, quite a classy young player, same as Antonio Nusa. So we've got a lot of young players that are quite good and talented, all in their own different rights, but considering uh, Nicholas Seiwold and Arthur Vermeeren are both central defensive midfielders who can do the, uh, like Amadou Haidara, Kevin Campbell, or Xavier Schlager roles, although the latter is also out with an ACL injury. He won't be coming back until January. So you won't have to worry about him on Tuesday night. Um, but the the mainstays uh, of the team, like Willie Orban with, with his leadership, um, that'll be crucial, organising the defence and things like that and making sure that we keep our shape also in uh, set plays and things as well. And then you've got uh, a couple of other players that are coming through as well. Uh, Latrell Gertruda, um, as we just got from Freinord. He's actually a very versatile uh, right back and also uh, centre back as well. So, yeah, we've got a lot of new faces, uh, although the mainstays uh, will also make sure that we keep everything going the way it should be. It's quite an interesting dynamic at Leipzig where you've got some of the players that have been there for ages. You know, you look at Josef Poulsen, who was playing in the lower leagues of German football. He's came through with Leipzig through and he's been playing games for Denmark and Leipzig respectively. You've got Willy Orban that's been captain for a number of years, Galashi that's been in goals for a number of years. Is that the sort of model that you keep some of the experienced players around, but then you have that flow of young players coming through, maybe those are the ones that you sell on after two or three years for for a, a you know a massive profit. Yeah, that is sort of like the the Leipzig transfer model, so to speak. Um, because it, for us to take that next step, I've always said that we need to actually keep our you know good younger players uh, to start challenging for the title uh, on a regular basis. Um, but you know we have a good habit of you know getting scouting good players or good young talent, uh, building them up and then making a profit that way, and then going out and trying to buy the you know another up and coming star, um, you know and make them profitable as well. We've we've done it a few times over the seasons. You know you look at uh, Nkunku, Sabozloy, um, Gardevoir, um, Upramakano. Uh, these are all you know good 
world class players, and you know we've gotten a more higher fee for them from than what we've paid as well. So the Leipzig model, as is what you expect, is to to get some good young talent, nurture them, and and then sell them on uh, for a decent sum. Yeah, you mentioned them earlier on, but how how big of a loss is Xavi Simons? He's obviously a key player for Leipzig um, on loan from PSG, but he's also a key player for the Dutch national team. How big a loss is he in that in the, the middle of the park and an attacking midfield? Yeah, astronomical loss. Um, we noticed on the weekend, or I noticed on the weekend, um, at Signal during a park when we played Dortmund, there was really no there was a lack of creativity going forward and a lack of, you know, players trying to beat a man. I mean, Antonio Nusa to give him some credit. He did, you know, uh, try to, you know, beat a couple of players and whatnot, but he just doesn't have that ball control or that little bit of extra skill that Xavi Simmons does possess. I mean, Xavi Simmons is also a one in a generational talent, so to speak. He's right up there with, you know, top talents of his age group. So replacing those players are very hard to, to replace, you know, they're so, you know, it's going to be very difficult uh, on Tuesday night not actually having his creative ability and spark. But I do back the boys to be able to play as a team and do what they can for that loss. How much of a, a loss as well was, and I, I remember him playing a couple of years ago against Celtic in the Champions League. How, how big a loss has Mohamed Samakan been for RB Leipzig? Because I remember him being one of the standout players for Leipzig against Celtic in the Champions League. He went to Al Nasser, I believe, in the Saudi Pro League. How big a loss has he been at the back for, for RB Leipzig? Yeah, so he's been a bit of a loss, but also not too bad. So Latrell Gertruda came in as his replacement, and he's uh, he's a lot better um, in that position of on the wing, so like on a right back or uh, left back uh, role where Mohamed Simikin would be, because he's quite normally a centre back. Um, although Marco Rose used to always put him as a full back, so. Um, in, in that re- retrospect, in the, the fullback position, Gertruda is a step up, um, although he doesn't have the passing ability as in the long passing ability. Uh, Gertruda is a better crosser than Simikin, um, and he's a bit more of a dribb- um Simikin's a lot better as a dribbler as well. Um, that's no... Uh, Gertrude is no slouch, though, so to speak, uh, when it comes to his dribbling ability, but uh, if you're going to you know weigh up one, one another, then yeah, they do have their pros and cons. Yeah, he really did stand out, um, especially especially physically against Celtic. The way that he could run from back to front really, really quickly. Just looking at the team, who are the who are the danger men that Celtic should look out for in this game? Is it Benjamin Sesko, this young emerging talent up front? You know, sort of the next talent coming through. A lot of people have been saying, is it Lewis Appenda, a Belgian international? Who are the who are the main talents that Celtic should be looking out for on match day four? Well, yeah, um, obviously those that strike duo there. Um, I've always said that I'd love to keep these two lads uh, for for the long term, as you know they could be a strike you know partnership that is could, could be feared over all of Europe and even in the Bundesliga for you know up to five years. So, um, a little fun fact is Benjamin Sesko actually is the only goal goal scorer in the Champions League this season for RB Leipzig uh, with all three goals, uh, one by penalty as well. Um, but besides them two. Um, I'd also like to say that Baumgartner, Noosa, and also Odrago, if he does play, um, they're also some dangerous players. And then you've also got Yusuf Powson. If he, I don't think he'll start, but if he comes on, uh, he's still able to uh, shield the ball, um, you know, s- start play as well and distribute and even score goals as well. So you've got at least a, a handful of players there that you need to watch out for. Yeah, so Marco Rosa has been at the club for a couple of years now. What what do the fans and the media in general in Germany think about the manager? I know he was manager of Borussia Dortmund and then previous to that he was Borussia Mönchengladbach and Red Bull Salzburg as well. So he's been about the block a bit. How has his time in charge of RB Leipzig been so far and how do the fans feel about his overall contribution? Yeah, so being a, a Leipzig native, um, most of the uh, Leipzig uh, fan base over there, like they absolutely love him. And uh, internationally, it's a it's a bit mixed. Uh, myself is I've been critical sometimes of some of the things that he's done. Like for instance, he, he seems to put on substitutions a little bit too late um, to not actually impact the game. Like you know, seventy five minutes in, you know, to to you know get a game uh, on your side if it's you know 1-1 or 2-1 or something to me that's a little bit too late to be putting on your players to try to change the tide of the game um but in 
the whole retrospective things of his tactics and things like that. He's normally pretty good, and I've I've backed him uh, ever since uh, he's come through to you know to go that extra higher. So if anyone's going to be that manager to go to win the Bundesliga, I actually hope it's Marco Rosa. So there's been a couple of people that haven't been too happy uh, that have been posting over on social media about his management of players like Elif Elmas, um, which for me. I, I want to see more of him as well. Um, it's sort of like a, I think it was like a 20 something odd million euro flop from Napoli that people are saying. Um, if, if he's not in our plans uh, going forward, I'd like to see him be playing a lot more. And then that way is, it gives a potential suitor uh, for a loan in January as well to see what he's made of and what he can do. And maybe even a chance to just rediscover his form from Napoli. Yeah, he won the Scudetto with Napoli a couple of years back. He's a good player as well to watch out for, potentially could make an impact in the game against Celtic. Now, there is going to be a reuni reunion of some sort between Nicholas Kuhn and RB Leipzig. Nicholas Kuhn was in the academy for a couple of years. Um, he went about the block. <coughs> he, was at, he was at Ajax. He was at Bayern Munich's B team as well. Um, will, will Leipzig be looking out for him as a player to potentially look out for? because he, he has been in good form for Celtic this season, scored a wonderful goal a couple of days ago against Aberdeen at Hamden. Well, they, they'll know all about his ability and his potential. Is he a player that they will be looking out for and, and sort of earmarking as a potential threat? Yeah, funny you should say that. I'm not too sure about um, you know Leipzig themselves or the club or anything like that. Um, but for myself on my podcast, I do uh, what I call a player watch. Um, it may not always be like the the player to watch. Uh, for instance, uh, the last game that we had in the Champions League with Liverpool, I did the uh, the goalkeeper as you know no one's even heard of him. But to be a number two in a world class team like Liverpool, you have to have some sort of skill. Um, so I, I never seen him before, and you know he was easily the best on ground for the night. Um, so with the game coming up with you guys um, on Tuesday night, he was actually one of my players for player watch. The other one was um, Arnie Engels, I believe, the Bel uh, young Belgian as well. So um, I, I put Nicholas Kuhn first, um, but then uh, Arnie Engels, very close second of uh, two devastating plays that could really hurt us on the night. Yeah, the, the two of them are two of Celtic's standout players. Or one, Nicholas Kuhn was more a Celtic standout player this season. Arne Engels was the record signing, but he is coming back into the fold. He had a good performance as well at the weekend. Is there any other players that Leipzig will be looking out for? Maybe the Japanese trio of Hitati, Kyogo and Maeda. You know, the three of the three of them all had good performances at the, during the, uh, or just last weekend against Aberdeen. Are these the sort of threats that, um, that Leipzig will be looking at? I seem to remember... Marco Rosa actually pinpointing them the last time that Celtic played them under Ange Postacoglu. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Maeda is, I'm pretty sure, is your top goal scorer. Uh, I, I could be mm -hmm. wrong on that. Nine goals uh, this season. Yeah, so you've always got to make sure that the the main person that's scoring all the goals is going to be on your list of plays that you want to try to keep quiet or limit the influence in during the game. Um, and there was also a couple of other ones as well uh, in, in your midfield. Um like Callum McGregor and James McCarthy. I know James McCarthy used to play, I think, for Leicester City. Uh, I could be wrong on that one. Uh, he used to play in the Premier League, if I remember correctly, or, or I might be completely wrong. <laughs> he, played, he, played for, he played for Crystal Palace in Everton. He's actually left the club. He left a, a few months ago. He's, he was kind of, he was brought in in 2021, but he, he left the club. Um, it just did not fit with Ange Postacoglu's style of play. And I think... I think that his legs had deserted him ever so slightly. So it's Callum McGregor. He he is the captain of the club, but you'll also have the likes of Arne Engels, who is an £11 million signing. Celtic haven't spent that kind of money on a player before, but he is expected to come and, and really take the midfield by the scruff of the neck. You've got Rio Hitati as well, who had a good performance last time out against Aberdeen, and Dyson Maeda, who not just attacking-wise, because he's got nine goals, I think that's an added bonus for Maeda. It's what he brings off the ball. He is, uh, Brendan Rodgers called him, one of the best pressers in world football at this moment in time. He he presses like a machine. Everybody calls him Duracell Dyson for that very reason. He's a battery. He keeps on going from minute one to minute 19. You'll see that tomorrow night when Celtic play against RB Leipzig. So um, what's the feeling of the fans going into this game? I know that you, you do a Leipzig podcast and you'll be speaking to supporters. What's the feeling of the fans going in? Are they confident that they can get a result in this game given performances against the likes of Atletico Madrid and Juventus? Or are they a bit apprehensive, three losses in a row, the fact that it's maybe a must win for Leipzig going into this game? It's a little 50-50. So some uh, are worried and, and unsure on, on what the result will be. Uh, and there's also some that 
uh, you know, are, are quite confident as well that, uh, you know, backing the lads to go over there and get the job done. So it, it, it's a little 50-50. It's mixed feelings. Um, it, like you said, it's a must win. If we don't win it, you can almost kiss our Champions League season goodbye as getting into that 24th spot uh, for the Champions League playoff will be quite difficult. Not impossible, but quite difficult with our run of games after that with, uh, I believe the next very next two is Inter Milan and Aston Villa. And then after that, we've got Sporting and then we round it up with Strumgraz. So there's at least three games there because depending on Sporting, they're no statues either. Um, you know, you could potentially lose those three games as well. So looking at it from the bigger picture is where are the points coming and we're going to have to try and take some sort of points from there. And I think all the players will know that as well, flying over to Glasgow on Tuesday. Yeah, that's a really, really difficult fixture list. When you look at Celtic, it's as if... The magic button that Cristiano Ronaldo pressed in that Champions League draw was kind in comparison to, to what Leipzig have managed to, to face off against. You know, having a rejuvenated Juventus, Atletico Madrid, Simeone, that's its own challenge. Arne Schlotz, Liverpool revolution that's happening just now. You would think that this is a game that's, that Leipzig need to go and take maximum points from, but easier said than done given the, the atmosphere that they're going to be facing off against. Will that be will that be a factor, do you think, tomorrow night? The 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 atmosphere at Celtic Park, the Celtic fans being that 12th man against Leipzig, do you think that would be one that, um, that the Leipzig players maybe not would be intimidated by? Well, they might be intimidated by, but they'll be they'll be thinking forward to that game and that's what they need to deal with. Oh, absolutely. Like uh, the leadership group of, you know, like Kevin Campbell, Peter Galacci, um, really Orban, you know, they'd, they'd all be saying to the younger group, like, there's nothing that you've ex experienced before. You know, yes, you may have experienced like the Atletico Madrid you know, the cauldron over there, or you might have, you know, had Signal doing a park the other day, but Champions League night over there, it's just one of those feelings that you need to go and experience as a player. I mean, I've never been there as a as a supporter, but you can hear it bleeding in like from from the TV. And it's just it's just an amazing atmosphere. And look, they're gonna have to either score early or just settle into the, the rhythm quite early. Otherwise, if they let that get to them, then you're basically already lost stepping out of the pitch. Yeah. So what sort of support do you think the, the, the RB Leipzig fans will bring to Celtic Park? If you were to put a rough estimate on numbers, how, how many do you think will be making the trip from Germany to Glasgow? It's a good question. I'm, I'm going to say around about 3,000 because that's what the domestic uh, was from uh, Dortmund, like from Leipzig to Dortmund uh, over on the weekend. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to go with just three thousand. I haven't looked at the actual official numbers. Uh, I know some people are already leaving now uh, to go over there. So uh, I, I think some people are catching trains as well or and flights. So um, I'm not too sure how you know like all the mass transit system and all that works. Obviously you can fly there, but um, I know all, a lot of people are going there at the moment. So I'm going to roughly put a, a figure of about three thousand on there. I think one of the uh, official fan clubs is going. I don't know which one because um, there is quite a few, um, but uh, th there should be a decent presence there, hopefully. That's quite interesting that you say that. There, there seems to be a very big support for RB Leipzig. Now, they're a, they're a team that have been criticised in the Bundesliga. There's been quite a bit of criticism towards them. Are they now a well-supported club? I mean, I guess they've always been a well-supported club because they've, they've had that success going through the leagues. There was obviously the Leipzig beforehand that came before RB Leipzig. What What is the sort of fan base now, just from the outside looking in? Um is it, is it like a big... I know that they've got a massive stadium that um, holds 40,000. Is that filled out every week? Is it, Are they one of the bigger supported teams in Germany already? Yeah, I, I think the official count is between 38 and 42 or something like that. I think our stadium holds about 47,000 or something like that. So almost all ticketing mem members get a seat basically at all home games. Um, and in Leipzig, they're, you know, they're quite popular. They're pretty much the team in Leipzig and in Saxony but uh, over in all the other places basically you're almost a, a foreigner like myself I guess you could say uh, over there you know because if everyone doesn't you know like them because of 50 to 1 and and all that stuff and I won't go into full detail unless you you know you you would like me to um, but yeah like you know they're, they're slowly growing um, but in, internationally more so um, than locally um, but there is still a support that is slowly growing in Germany as well. Yeah I was actually speaking to Marvin Komper former Leipzig defender and Celtic defender for one point as well and he was saying that he felt that sort of adversity as well not just for playing for Leipzig but 
for Hoffenheim too because they're owned by a billionaire and they felt this sort of animosity. So having that experience of playing for Hoffenheim previously in his career helped him with what he experienced playing for Leipzig as well. But that's that's really interesting that you say that and it seems to be a club that's grown and it helps that they're doing really well on the park as well and getting you know, the next superstars through, but obviously the next step will be keeping hold of those players for an extended amount of time so that you can really challenge for different competitions. Just finally, Justin, before I, I, I give you the red carpet to sort of tell everybody where you where we can find you, what do you think the score prediction is going to be? What is your score prediction? What is the score going to be uh, tomorrow night between Celtic and RB Leipzig at home? Or at Celtic Park, rather? Yes, yeah, so I was very torn on how to predict the the score prediction um as there was a complete 180 like shift degree shift from the game in the dfb pockle compared to uh playing against Borussia dortmund the Borussia dortmund were all over us um we were second to the ball um we only had like seven total shots to their like 20 roughly um we had no corners um set pieces were woeful um we were defending them woeful as well so if we pull out that team uh over on tuesday night then it's going to be a 2-1 loss and 2-1 win to celtic um however if we bring our a game and bring the dfb pockle side that uh, we played against st Pauli in the 4-2 um then i would say it would be a 3-1 win but for rbl so it really depends on what team shows up uh, and the first 20 25 minutes is going to be a huge display of what team does show up yeah, that sounds very much like Celtic domestically as well. If Celtic show up, they usually win their games. But if they allow other teams to come in to things, then, you know, adverse results can happen. So it all matters on what Leipzig team turns up on the night. And the same for Celtic. Celtic need to be at their A game. Leipzig need to maybe be below their best. And then maybe a result can happen for the home side. Justin, thank you very much for joining me on this video today. Before I let you go, and very thank you very much for coming on, um, where can people find RBL Talk if they haven't already listened to your podcast? Yeah, so RBL Talk is on all major podcast uh, networks. We're on Apple, Spotify, uh, YouTube, YouTube Music. Uh, the YouTube channel is where I do live stream watch-alongs. And also I have the video guests um, like like what we're doing now, basically, uh, over, over on that, that channel over there. And, um, yeah, we're on all social media, like um, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it these days, and um, and Instagram and TikTok for reels of all the video guests and things like that. So, yeah, basically uh, anywhere that you think a podcast should be, we're on it. Perfect. Thank you very much, Justin. I really do appreciate it. Um, just a quick shout out before we end this video. If you want to support us just a little bit more, you can join our YouTube members channel. £2.99 a month. You'll receive early video access, priority comments and exclusive members chat function. Click that join button if you're on desktop and become a YouTube member on the Celtic Way. Thank you very much, Justin, for joining me this afternoon. Really do appreciate it. Enjoy the game. Good luck for whatever happens tomorrow night. Fingers crossed it's a good game between two good sides. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you all on the next video. Cheers, guys.